All right, what I'm hoping to show you here is how I deal with some of the smaller pieces when I'm making a model. And um, I have to do some uh, panel lining, which means that when you've got stuff cut out and there's some surface details that you want to bring out, say a uh, little lines or uh, hatches maybe cut into the into the mold um, you and you can kind of see it here let me uh, let me keep this under the light focus in um, basically there are the, the the little feature lines and in regular lighting, you can't really see them stand out. So what I do is I put them into a uh, pair of craft tweezers like this, and um, hopefully it won't go bling off into the distance, but uh, if it does, pieces to the gods. Um, I will put this rubber band on the back end of this to hold them closed so that hopefully this doesn't bite me on camera and make me look stupid. More stupid. Excuse me. Um, okay. But as you can see, this is a, well, you can't really see, but this is a very small nose piece okay and um, it's the bottom half of the face of a Gundam so there are some lines on there and in order to get them to come out what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little off gray here wow I came out of there under force Clean that up later. oh look Here's an old piece of t-shirt for that exact express purpose. It's as if I'm prepared. Don't let it fool you. Um, okay, now what I will do is take a smaller um, brush here and I'm gonna take some of this pigment and I'm going to put the water in with the pigment to get it nice and sort of um, watery, runny. You want it to either fill in behind your brush as you stroke through it like that, or um, maybe even in this case, just a little bit more because, let me see if I can do this well on camera. Because what you're going to do is take this watery stuff here and dab it in to the lines, the panel lines, and what this will do is when it dries, it will just have a sort of a gray line that goes through it, as opposed to when it was just a white mass of uh, plastic, okay? You don't want a lot on there, and you don't want it overly dark, because if you filled this in with, like, black, it would uh, not look nearly as natural to your eye. Now that can be a good thing too. You can be going for, um, you know, hyper-realistic. There are people that do things where it ends up looking like a comic book panel. Uh, they do the sword, the light source shading on it and everything, it's crazy. Um, but anyway, then when I've got it on that set of, 
you know, I can have it sit in the air, up, off, away from any surfaces or cat hair or any of that other good stuff. Um, I can just sort of let it sit there and dry. And then I will show you what happens when I'm done with that, when it's finished drying. Okay, now, so as you can see, this looks like an absolute mess, right? Take it off the tweezers. And um, you can use a small pencil eraser. Um, sometimes I'll just use my thumbnail like I'm doing here to gently remove the paint from the areas it doesn't belong on. And then, Once I clean it up, as you can see, um, the gray paint has sort of stayed inside the lines that are cut into the piece, but scraped away from everywhere else so that um, those lines sort of stick out a little. And again, I used a gray paint for this on white. I generally favor gray on white um, and not going like full dark black because it looks a little funky but anyway there's that just so that you can get an idea of how big that piece actually is um you know there's my fingers there's a set of nippers uh it's a very small piece but as you will see when i get the face put together those little details would normally be in semi-shadow on the face. And so them coming out like that is a really good idea. Now the next step in this is to get the face form out and I can either use this sticker for my eyes right here. Uh, it's sort of a, looks like a superhero mask. And that goes on um, this piece right up in here. And as you can see there, there are eyes and there is a sort of a relief part that is red. And um, I can either paint the eyes in or I can use the sticker. I think in this case, though, I'm just going to go easy and I'm going to go with the sticker. It fits nice and snugly. Snugly. But, um, let's see if I can kind of show that around. Oop. <laughs> Take two. Let's see if I can hold it and kind of show you what that will look like when it's on. And that's the importance of panel lining when you're building um, a model kit. Uh, you know, you're sitting there saying, great, it's Gundam. Um, you know, how does this apply? Well, um, it will apply because you can do the same thing with the front end of your car. Um, you can bring out the panel lines in your cars if you like. All of this can be enhanced by just adding a little wash of dirty water and letting it dry. And then you just take a pencil eraser and you clean off the parts that you didn't want that on. Try to be careful when you're applying, but um, in the case that you don't, um, it's super easy to remove in this case. I'm going to wish I had not done this on camera, but, but I'm just trying to get the just the edge of that decal, and the first say about a dozen times I tried to do this. I was 
horribly, horribly inaccurate. So if you're going to pick this up and try to do something like this, um, you know, don't feel bad. You've got to, <laughs> you gotta try. Boy, I am ruining the day I decided to do this on camera though. You want this to apply evenly, and you want that decal to be up off of the under eye area, which is red. And this is probably, without doubt, the most delicate part of an HG kit is getting this right. That doesn't look too terrible. Once you've got it placed there, you know, a little soft fingertip applique is not a problem. Fairly straight. So what I will do is um, I have to trim up the helmet pieces here um, and then they have this piece here which is called a V-fin uh, for obvious reasons and I have to uh, trim that off and put that on the front of his face but I am going to take a break and walk away from this. That was the chair not my back. Honestly, although I, I kind of feel like, you know, uh, hunching over and doing just a couple of little things and also, you know, I'm trying to keep the camera in the best angle. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry about, you know, my hands getting off lens. I'm trying to work with very, very, very tiny pieces. Uh, for some reason it relaxes me. Okay. I've got a bunch of stuff on my desk. I feel like Mr. Rogers when uh, Mr. McFeely arrives. What do you mean, who's Mr. McFeely? Look it up on the Googles. By the way, folks, always when you have computer equipment, electronic equipment, any kind of equipment, keep your liquids away from your equipments, okay? The liquidity gets into the equipments and gets all discombobulated. I went out and I did actually find a couple of pieces of die cast. Um, maybe I just found one. Oh, uh, no, no. I guess I just found the one. Um, <laughs> it's called Max Steel. Max Steel is my. Uh, Cinemax name. This is a, it's a fantasy car, but kind of like the um, title chaser, or what, was, what did they call that one? Um, I'll look it up maybe. Uh, it's it's kind of like so reminiscent of, of a real car that I kind of like them to be in the, um, in in my collection this is a really neat one i love the rotary fan on the front and um i love the matte gray finish 
uh, with the gold accents on it. That's really cool. Not sure what the 54 signifies on the side. Probably just that the company was in 54 years of production by the time that thing was made. I don't know. Hot Wheels loves to hide that shit all over their cars. The other thing I'm going to do is open and give you a closer look at this Hudson Hornet. Um, I believe Rusty may have sent this Hudson, um, or perhaps it was one of the rest of you. I'm so sorry if I got that wrong. Um, but the, uh, I really do like older cars like this and the Hudson Hornet, even though, um, they didn't kind of wipe the, the, um, headlights on it. I thought I had one of these, but when I did my recent uh, case cleaning, uh, I don't know where it must have gone, or maybe I just didn't have one. So whoever sent this Hudson Hornet to me, I really, really, really genuinely appreciate it. It's been sitting, it's been sitting on my wife's desk for a very long time, and she's like, I don't, I don't know what this is. And I said, oh, you know, my burned out brain I sort of remembers something to that effect um, once. Excuse me, I'm in a, I'm in a reverie. Sorry. For a moment, I was in the Highlands. <laughs> that dog is looking at me like I'm speaking German over here. Which uh, would make him attack, I think. On to uh, some print here. Yeah, I know. Everything is, is just sort of bouncing around here topically. If you are new to the program, I don't try... I, you know, I, I try very hard not to do two things in a in a 24 hour period the same. I, I try to cover a lot of different content because I do have a lot of different interests. We all here at the Monkey Shine Lab have a lot of different interests. So it's not that we are trying to uh, be megalomaniacal. Though we can be. We're just trying to suit all of our own interests. Oh, by the way, uh, in, in addition to the new motorized monkey here, um, we have new business cards. We have new business cards. We have um, new uh, stickers. And so that's all um, on its way to uh, a variety of people. And um, also, if we do correspond with you, of course, you know, we, we always throw business cards in. I would like to apologize to Nazar and a few other folks who have gotten boxes that have come um, in our in our transition it's kind of like the secret service we were transitioning to new business cards and all of the information uh was retained which was the the problem um i picked up this fantastic four uh comic book from our good friends over at radar toys 1440 Lancaster Drive, Northeast in Salem, Oregon. They are a great company to do business with. They have an online presence, so if you're not in the uh, in the state or in the area, in the Eugene area as well, um, you can do business with them through their online uh, portal. Pick this up. This is a this is a George Perez. Um, I picked this up. This is a Perez original. On the back of it. There's some funk. I gotta tell you, honestly, it looks like uh, pipe resin off of like somebody was cleaning their metal pipe back in the 70s. And they put it on the back of this comic book. So, uh, you know, their damage means my savings. And so I picked it up for only $2, which is really pretty good. Uh, I picked it up because it said Gore the Gorilla. You will be absolutely amazed. Um, you know, this is sort of his uh, origin. Uh, you will not grasp the startling secret of Gore. Well, the startling secret of Gore is that he's yet another uh, gigantic, uh, semi-intelligent uh, monkey, as Jonah likes to say over at Radar Toys. Um, anyway pick that up it, it's it's really fun for me because i grew up with 
comic books, I started really kind of probably grabbing things off the rack without asking first, um, back around 1974. So comic books like this do exist in my collection, though this one doesn't up until now. On to some newer stuff. Um, this is another series that I am really uh, chewing up in terms of enjoying it. Um, this is uh, the new Moon Girl series, and the last issue was Moon Girl meets the Avengers, and then this is Moon Girl meets the X-Men. It's like they kind of handed her off at the airport to adults. Um, you know, so they're looking for uh, Devil Dinosaur, and they're trying to stabilize um, the, the genetic code of another dinosaur that is uh, growing and shrinking and doing other weird things. Anyway, uh, this is the continuation of that, so I can't wait to start reading it. And then um, the other thing that I picked up while I was there in the bins, and I'm gonna put this back in the board in the bag quickly, probably after wiping it down. Um, this, is from this is from 1995. It is a foil cover uh, Avengers story, and I, I, I didn't pick it up specifically for the cover, but I think you can see why it caught my eye. Um, I am a huge Black Widow fan, and uh, the Vision and everything else are like, you know, Avengers is my jam, um, and then I took it out of the bag and off off the bag and board so that you could actually get a look at the back here, which is also foil. Um, it's really awesome, and I'm trying not to handle it much so that it doesn't get fingerprints all over it. But I had to get this book. Um, and again, it was only a buck, which speaks volumes of the time that the book comes from the 90s were not um a great time for marvel so the you know the sometimes you can find stuff like this that is super 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 uh gimmicky glad to have that one in my in my collection just just cause well, that's all I've got for... Oh, wait. <laughs> My wife has been bugging the shit out of me, okay? If you don't like this, don't take it personally. But there is something to see on the other side of this segment, I promise. God, no, did I come up with something? The same day she brought home the Stingser, my wife brought home the Mutasect, also a Geogon. Um, and she has since bringing this home has been bugging me when I'm going to open it. When am I going to open it? When am I going to open it? So here we go. <laughs> and just because I will respect my wife's way of doing things, I'm not going to do a, for once, I'm not going to do a tray shot. <laughs> Are you kidding? Eat it, Annie. Tray shot. See you later, find you later, find you later. Tweet. Seen the one. Have you seen the video where I cut one of these things and it just went past Annie's head? Who was oh, that was a it was a box opening, I think. Might have been Chris Sheets box opening. I almost took Annie's eye out with a flying <laughs> Neither of us noticed what had happened actually at the time. And then when I played back for editing later on, I found the I found that it was all like all but an inch. Man <laughs> blinded my wife. Which some claim she already is after marrying me. My mother first and foremost. Uh, okay. The Mutasect is, it, it, this is the base, okay? So this is the magnet. This It's gonna pop up from here and stand up on the table. 
It's got little fists. I love this thing. As with all of the uh, Geogons and all these other new ones that are sort of looking this way, I don't think about the fact that I want them until I start to try to close them up and realize how cool they really are. So let's see, let's see if I can do this one on camera. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's neat. It's an egg shape. Uh, sort of, yeah, like a big alien egg. Oop, almost dropped it. That's pretty cool. And then when you pop it, oh, oh yes. That's pretty cool. And it drops just fine, opens up just fine. That's really a fun one. Thank you, honey. We are working on a set of rules whereby all of these pieces will come into play. I don't know exactly how it's working, but I do have a very rough structure sort of written down and built out for this. So stick with me because this is, this is actually going somewhere. The usual place that all things go here at Monkey Shine Lab, sort of in, a, in an egg shape. It's not a circle. We go out and hit different topics all the time. Anyway, if you do like what you see here at Monkey Shine Lab, please remember, uh, we need subscribers and um, the the threat of those banana shorts is real, people. It's, uh, Annie bought them and that's the condition and we are four subscribers away. Most of you who watch our programs aren't subscribed, but we would appreciate it. So please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. You'll get notices of premieres and all that other fun stuff that you can attend and waste time with us, okay? Anyway, thanks for coming on out here to the Monkey Shine Lab, and I'm going to catch you later.